This is Bishop John Durfler of the Diocese of Marquette. In my last message, we reflected on the seventh stage of the Christian moral life, according to St. Augustine's treatise on the Sermon on the Mount. In the seventh stage, we became peacemakers, at peace within ourselves through the Holy Spirit's gift of wisdom. We have been reflecting on how St. Augustine relates the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the Beatitudes in successive stages of growth in the Christian moral life. Let us take a summary look at our journey. We, in humility and poverty of spirit, through the gift of the fear of the Lord, have come through the gift of piety to meekness to hear God's word or to an openness and docility to the sacred scriptures. Then, formed by the scriptures and the gift of knowledge, we have come to know our sins and mourn them. Then, having mourned our sins through the gift of fortitude, we hunger and thirst for what is right. Then, by being merciful to the weakness of others, we have opened our hearts to the working of the gift of counsel that we may know even more God's will in our lives. Then all of this has given us purity of heart and we perceive more deeply the mysteries of our faith through the gift of understanding. And all of this brings us to a deep interior peace. Thus, through the gift of wisdom, we have become peacemakers within ourselves. Yet something is still missing. There are seven traditional gifts of the Holy Spirit and eight Beatitudes. How does St. Augustine relate eight Beatitudes with seven gifts of the Holy Spirit? St. Augustine notes a similarity between the first and the eighth Beatitudes. They are Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Both Beatitudes end with receiving the kingdom of heaven. So, in a way, the eighth Beatitude goes back to the beginning and sums up all of them and brings us to maturity. As we have grown to maturity in the Christian moral life, we now have the strength to bear persecution and we realize that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. St. Paul speaks of this in the letter to the Romans. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. End of quote. We who have taken this journey to maturity in the Christian moral life trust that we will receive the kingdom of heaven. No matter what happens, we are convinced that we are not separated from the love of Christ. This is Bishop John Durfler of the Diocese of Marquette.